Hello everyone, welcome to this new video about MLflow. In today's video, we are going to keep looking into um, MLflow runs and how we can use them to track our machine learning experiments. So, in the in the code that you are seeing right now, what we, we are doing is basically create a new experiment called testing MLflow1. Um, basically, what we want to do is to create or start some runs under this experiment. However, if we use the code as it is right now, what we're going to do is to lock uh, this parameter under a new run called testing that is under the default experiment. So let's see um, what this code does. Zero. Okay, now let's go to our MLflow UI. Here we can see the we have created a new experiment called testing MLflow1, but there is no um, run under this experiment because uh, the, the run was created under the default experiment. So if we look into testing run, we can see that a new parameter learning rate has been logged here. So how we can assign that experiment or how we can associate uh, an experiment with a run. Well, that's easy. We had two ways. There is a method called um, mlflow.setExperiment in which we had to provide the experiment name. Uh, let's say that is testing mlflow1. And this method will basically ensure that all the logs, uh, all the runs are going to be under this experiment. So let's try the code again. Let's go to the interface, and here, if we look at the testing MLflow1 experiment, we can see that a new run called testing has been created, and is doing what it's supposed to do. But um, there is a second way that we can use to, um, to associate an experiment with a run. So what we can do is to provide the experiment ID of this, uh, the run that we are interested, the, the experiment that we are interested in. So here, this function create mlflow experiment is returning an object, uh, an experiment object. So let's use that experiment experiment dot um, experiment id. Uh, and by doing this, we uh, we are going to be able to associate this experiment with the logs or the runs that we are going to create. So first, let's go to the interface and let's delete this experiment. This now let's go here and let's execute the code. Okay, experiment ID. It seems the uh, for some reason uh, experiment ID. What happens if I use? Get MLflow experiment. Okay. Create MLflow experiment is returning the experiment ID. So uh, let's go to the code here and let's call this experiment ID. Like right on. I can either you know use experiment ID here directly. Okay, now it's working. So if we refresh this, testing MLflow one, we can see the a new run called testing has been created here and is doing what it's supposed to do. Or what we can do, let's say the, of course, this is like adding more code, but let's say that only for the sake of learning, I can use the the method called the get MLflow experiment and use experiment here. Yes, exactly. And uh, yes, why not? Here, let's use experiment dot experiment ID, right? Because now this method called get MLflow experiment is retrieving um, an experiment object. So let's go to the interface and let's delete this experiment. And let's run the code again. Okay, now we can see here that a new experiment has been created, this in MLflow1, under which we have um, logged uh, a, lo a run called testing. Um, same thing. Okay, that's everything for this video. Thanks for watching it and see you in the next one.